know, I always had a report. Yo, bro, like I told you, that's why I told this whole story is because you talking about you can't do nothing with Jay-Z and Nas. None of this shit wouldn't have been possible. Nothing. Well, I, you know what my bottom line is, and I'm gonna get back to the story. We all help build a diplomat brand, the build, let's say the Br diplomat building, but I own the land. Right. You can't build a building if you don't own the land. Right. You, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, see the guy, y'all niggas is some funny dudes, man. Y'all niggas throw these questions and you get these niggas to bite or whatever. You can't give me the bite, bro. That's why I did this shit myself. Who else did this shit on live, my nigga? I'm not, I'm not for that. And you, my man, we see, see the whole. Program. I'm a big fan of Breakfast Club. It's like they Breakfast Club fuck with y'all so much. You had Ebro hating on me the other day on his show. Say, okay, I'm never get no money. Yo, bro, that shit corny. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with, I fuck with name seven. I just think the child have a better show in the morning time. Just in the morning time. I fuck with everybody. I fuck with everybody all in New York. I just think y'all have the best morning show. Period. So where I'm at? Um, Bird game. Back to the bird game. Where I was at? Back. <laughs> where I was at though? Back to the bird game. Oh yeah, so you know, he started doing this bird game shit and all this and I and um and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, why are you branching off or whatever? So I copywrote the name just in case. So no, I was at Bowling. Bowling came out and he was popping, you know, he get stack bundles, God bless the dead. Girl named Jaja from Miami, she was dope. She had some kid from Baltimore. Some kid from Baltimore to sound like Jay-Z, that was dope. And then he got Max B. Now, Max B, and Jim's on right, he's the one who put Max B on. Max B is from my building. Him and Mike Bruno are from my block. And Max B, you know, I, you know, he wasn't Max B. His name was Charlie Rambo. And Charlie was ill, man. Charlie was one of these niggas that would piss in a bottle and bums would be sleeping. He'd pour the piss on them and laugh and shit like that. Like, he was... A funny nigga. Charlie Rambo was a funny nigga. So he was always getting in trouble though, in and out of jail doing his thing. And you know, that's just the environment we lived in. So he got out of jail, he come up to me. This is word for word. So I'm like, Charlie, what up when you guys say, yo, Flea, I just just came home. I said, You just oh y'all said you always just come home. Pause, baby. Okay, we're back. He said, You always just coming home. So I said, he said, Yo, Flea. You know how I rap now, let's get this shit clicking like Dorothy's heels. <laughs> I said, yo, I, I laugh like that because I couldn't take him seriously. Because this is my man, he from my building. I'm like, you rap now, Max? I mean, Charlie, he like, yeah, my name is, my name is uh, Bigger Valley. I said, Bigger Valley? He said, I'm Biggie and Tupac mixed in one. But I'm laughing again because, like I said, I know this dude from my building, and, you know. I couldn't really take Max series because I didn't see the potential because, you know, I'm not God. I don't always catch every audience. I'm like, oh, how you miss this thing? I, I just didn't see it because I fuck with him. And I didn't hear him rap at that time. I never heard him rap. So I guess Jim, some type of way, got with Max. I don't know how Bruno, Mike Bruno got with Jim and they got together. So Jim called me like, yo, I'm going to fuck with Max B. And I was like, yo, guy, do your thing. I didn't I didn't know it would be this type of situation. I'm just being totally honest. I didn't know. So, you know, even when they start beefing niggas from my block, like, how the fuck you let that go down, Cam? And I'm like, yo, cut this shit. You knew you ain't know Charlie was gonna be this good. Cut it out. You ain't know Charlie was gonna be this fucking good. Yeah, but no, man, now fucked up him and Jim beefing now. Man, fuck it, man. I'm like, yo, bro, I don't I don't know. I can't really get into Max B, Jim Jones beef. I don't really know. How that shit started, but Max B always come to me on the block. Like, flee, man, get me out, let me come fuck with you. I said, man, I'm gonna keep it 100, bro. I'm gonna keep it all the way tall. I didn't see it, I didn't know. And you and Jim, Jim did see your talent more than any, more than, more than I did. So I can't just like motherfucking take you from Jim. It's, it's his deal, and motherfucker, I didn't know you was gonna be this good. I wish I would have because we from the same building, but I just didn't know, and I'm being totally honest. So he's forming this bird gang shit. And I'm like, I thought we all supposed to be the diplomats. What's going on? Why is this, this, little, this little side bird gang shit? You know what I'm saying? It's this little bird gang shit on the side. I'm like, back of my brain again, back of my brain, like, let's start a fake beef. Let's start a fake beef. So I'm like, all right, this nigga's branching off. I see it. I see him branching off. It's cool. It ain't no problem. But this is still my man. We ain't have no friction or nothing. 
So Born to Come Out, like I said, we have no problem when Born to Came Out. I may came to video late or whatever, whatever. I seen him say I never came to one of his shows. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember not coming to one of your shows. I just don't believe that. I'm not going to sit here and say, maybe maybe the way he described it, he said I never surprised him about it. Well, maybe I didn't surprise him, but I came to plenty of your shows. I came to your shows. I wasn't hating. I mean, why would I hate when I've been fighting for you to be a rapper for 10 years? So what happened was this, and I'm just being totally honest, man. This is when everything got fucked all the way up, B. I'm being honest, B. I'm telling you the truth. He can say I didn't come to the show. He can lie and say I robbed him of millions of dollars. I ain't robbed nobody because, let me explain something to you. This was the deal. Jewels was signed to me. And that's it. I had the Diplomat album and Jewels was signed to me. That's it. I had no paperwork with Jail Writer. I had no paperwork with Hal and my niggas. Them niggas with the baby grin and did their own deal. And that was cool. They could use the bird. Fuck it. It's all good. Jim never had no paperwork with Jim. So how did I rob him? I was eating, I'm not going to lie, off the Diplomat album, my album. And I had a drink venture deal with Jewels album with, um, Dev Jam. Cool. So what I was saying is we got the diplomat brand. I seen niggas get hundred million dollar checks. So Rockefeller, we shooting an old boy video. Kevin Lyles and Leo Cohen, these dudes came and presented Rockefeller, Dame Dash Biggs, and and Jay-Z with our check for 125 million. I don't know how much Irvin Murder ain't got. They was getting some mad bread over there. Rough Riders had just caught him. D, shout out to D for Rough Riders. He caught a wild check over there. And I'm like, yo, when I seen them niggas cash out for 125 million, I'm like, we got to keep crying. We got to. Because right then and there, I would say we was probably worth 15, 20 million at the time. I'm like, we ain't going to go for no 15, 20 million. I just seen the nigga hand a nigga a check for 125 million. So. I, didn't, I don't know what he said. I robbed him of it. I didn't rob him of anything. He had these artists, and then, like somebody's throwing no shade. You have Max B. You got Stack Bundles. Them two alone. Put them out. You could have ate. You know what I'm saying? Jim kept using them for his albums instead of putting them out. And like I'll be telling people, I'm like, you know, Jim, if you think about it, just think about it. And like I said, I got to always say no shade because everybody can say, Jim never put no artists out. Jim has never put an artist out. I got all the artists. I got all the talent. I was in the street recruiting all these rappers. Jim ended up getting some rappers, and what he did was use them for his album instead of putting them out. Max B may not be in jail if you put his album out. Or Stack Bundles might have got out of Far Rock if he had an album out. Jim never put these people album out. You know what I'm saying? If this, you know, like I said, no say, just think about it. Google it. Do the homework. What artists he put out? I'm not dissing. I'm not dissing at all. I'll sit here and wait for somebody. Tell me if they tell me who album he put out. No. Nobody. Shit, crickets. The real crickets are getting in the back. Right? <laughs> 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 okay. Because, hmm? Yeah? They're freaking nervous. Okay, yeah. Um, they said they, they want to talk about Zeke. Yeah, they asked him, you haven't mentioned it. Oh, yeah, no, I just, they late. Who else said I ain't mentioned Zeke is bugging? No, I, did. I don't know who told you Zeke ran the club in Ohio. I don't know, I ain't mentioned Zeke. Fam, they, Zeke, okay, that, real quick, Zeke. Zeke is the one, Jim did bring Zeke around, this is true, but me and Zeke built a rapport, which was crazy, so when I went to Ohio and got a club, Zeke ran the whole club. It was my club, but he was the manager of the club. You know what I'm saying? Zeke is the nigga... We got rich. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I was in Ohio and Chicago running two clubs, and Zeke ran the clubs. He's the one who ran the clubs. That's my nigga. I love Zeke. That's my motherfucking brother. That nigga, you know, fam, when shit was fucked up, Zeke ran the motherfucking clubs for me, and we got rich. Zeke has ran the motherfucking clubs. Like, I told a nigga, like, fucking uh, quick in Harlem Nights, and I was Sugar Ray. So, whoever well, saying mentioned Zeke, I'll just leave because I love Zeke. That's my that's my nigga, my nigga. Like, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have survived to make it to. You want another song? No, I'm good. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to survive to make it to diplomats if it wasn't for Zeke. Because, like I said, me, him, and Juels was in Ohio, and Juels 
Jewels wasn't even out there in the club. He was too young. He was young, not young enough to get in the club, but he he was out there. He out. He was out there. Uh, Cause I, I was like, yo, you gotta rap. Cause Joel, Joel, let me tell you something about Joel. Joel was the talented, most talented nigga in the world, but sometimes he need that push. He needed that push. Like I seen the interview on Flex, cause you know Jim told a story how I had a house in Chicago, and and you know Joel, we would be dressed to go to the club, and we walk out to go to the club, and Joel's be there. I'd be like, yo, you did your 16, and he's be stuttering, and then after 16, I'd be like. Stay here, we'll bring you some bitches back. You ain't you ain't coming till you write them 16. And Flex was like, I seen Flex like, oh, Kim was enjoying bossing somebody around. He was happy to boss around. Why the fuck would I enjoy? No, 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 I wasn't enjoying nobody bossing somebody around. It's like this, and I'll put it in a different perspective. If you got a basketball player and you a coach, you want to keep him after practice. You want to make him come early because you know his full potential. He may be better than all the other basketball players, but you want to be harder on him because you know his maximum potential, and that's just how I felt with you else. I'm like, this kid, he don't put 100% into it, but if he did, nobody would be able to touch this kid. So when we was in Chicago, when we was in Ohio, when we would go out, I wouldn't let him come. Or even my crib in Jersey, he'd stay with me. I'd be like, nah, you can't come out till you do these 16s because just I want to hear him. Them shits was fire. I want it more for me. Fuck the public. Give me more. <laughs> Give me some 16s for my own motherfucking inspiration. That kid was fucking bananas. So when Flex was like, oh, Ken was enjoying bossing somebody around. Nah, nah, bro. It ain't like that, bro. Sometimes you see potential in somebody. And sometimes the people that you see potential in needs an extra push to reach their maximum potential. And that's what I was doing. I'm not enjoying bossing the right around, bro. Not at all, man. No, not at all. That was my brother, and I knew that nigga was nice. So cool. Um, balling come out. Balling come out. And like I said, I just want to get to this part because Jim was, Jim was like, oh, I robbed him and did that, that. Like I said, I never had no paperwork with this man. That's how much I fuck with him. That's how much I fuck with him. I never did a contract with him. Do you. Do you, man. Do, get the money. Get the artist. Okay, cool. You ain't bracing no for I see you building your own crew, no problem. Whatever. So, me and Jim used to get a lot of women. We had a lot of women. We shared a lot of women. You know what I'm saying? That person, that's just the era we grew up in. You fuck this bitch, I fuck that bitch. You know, we fuck around bitches, yo, da 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 da. Boom, whatever, right? So, and this is just being honest. This is just, I'm telling you what happened. Because he'll say, I robbed him, he'll say whatever, he'll say, this is what I did, and I'm not going wrong, I was dead wrong for this. I was dead fucking wrong, and this is where the whole shit collapsed at. This is where everything went all the way downhill. I'm being totally honest. Jim met Chrissy, and when he met Chrissy, he, he'd been liking Chrissy his whole life. He, he loved Chrissy, you know what I'm saying? But he just started messing with her. So, you know, we, you know, back then, it wasn't, you know, even though now it's cool back then, or even back then it might have been cool, we was just kind of new to having millions of dollars and money or whatever. So, Jim just meet Chrissy and he started messing with her and he's buying her bags and buying her shoes like the first two, three weeks he met her or whatever. So, I was like, yo, you tricking, man? What is you doing? You tricking, you bugging or whatever. So, this is my mistake, and I'm being totally honest, and I, if I could do it over, I swear to God, I would do it all the way over, because I see how their relationship grow, and I see they're still together, and I think that's real dope shit. I think that shit is hot. I, I didn't know it would grow to be that, but you just, I'm thinking from a mindset, this is my man, last month we was fucking bitches, now this nigga is buying, what's his name? So I didn't know what turn into this. So what I did was I made these t-shirts, and it said, Tricky Ricky, AKA Jim Jones is a trick. And on the back of the shirt, I had we had mad niggas in jail. Snags was in jail. My man Chanel uh, from 115th, Young Handsome, he was in jail. We had a lot of niggas in jail at the time. And I was sending them money. So I made the shirt that said Jim Jones, Tricky Ricky, and, and he not looking out for none of our niggas in jail. And on the back of the shirt, I had all our niggas in jail, and I had called them a trick. But I wasn't looking at it like that. I'm looking like that's how we played. 
I wasn't trying to disrespect them because I didn't know their relationship would grow to be what it was. But them shirts hurt. You know what I'm saying? I had niggas wearing a shirt in the studio because we was cool. Niggas wearing a shirt. Everybody's wearing a shirt. It was just a joke. I didn't know. He took that shit serious, B. He took it serious. And to this day, I, I be man enough, I apologize about doing that. I really do. I apologize about that. But it's not from the perspective of that's what he put. That's my man. We fucked some bitches together last week, two weeks ago, a month ago. I didn't know it was like that. It was going to turn to this. And I'm happy how they really should grow. After I did that shirt, though, Everything was downhill. And niggas start acting like it's the business. Start acting like Cam is robbing us. Yo, Cam ain't doing this, Cam ain't doing this. That's when the shit fell out, after I made them shirts. So, even like with Juels, me and Juels had fell out. And I remember we fell out over something. And I wasn't speaking to him. So, Juels started hanging out with Jim. Jim called me, he said, yo, you and Juels going to do some shit. I said, yeah, we going through a little something right now, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it was. He's like, I knew something's up, because this little nigga keep calling my phone, wanting to hang out with me all the time, all of a sudden. You know, this little nigga don't be hanging out with me. I knew something was up. It's all good. So, me and Joel was speaking over something, and him and Jim built a better rapport, because Joel was with me all the time. He's in all these different states together. But that's what Jim was like, when it's me, he's like, yo, this little nigga keep calling me, I don't know what the fuck is up. Joel started hanging with him, and I'm like, cool. So after I did the shirts, me and Juels didn't have the best relationship in the world. Then I did the shirt, me and Jim's relationship wasn't really, really doing well. So them niggas started doing shit together, which was fine with me. I didn't, it didn't matter to me either. That was cool. It was, it was all good. And that's how the relationship between me and Jim Jones went bad. Nobody really knows this though. You know what I'm saying? Cool. I don't have no problem with that. Cool. In my brain, I'm like, Let's just keep the, whatever the problems is covered up so we can get the 125 million that Rockefeller got. Rockefeller got the 125 million. Let's go get the 125 million that them niggas got. Let's get it. If we got problems, so what? Sweep them just under the rug. Don't tell nobody. Whatever. Cool. So, I'm downtown the club one night. I'm by myself. I'm chilling at the club. You know, Jim is, Jim is, uh, you know, he's a blood at this time. You tell you, Jim is blood. So I don't know. I'm I'm not a blood. I'm not a gang member. I'm not none of that. I'm just Cameron Giles. I'm not a, I'm cool with all the gang niggas, Crips, the bloods, the my niggas, both on both sides. I'm just not a gang member. So Jim got all type of beef or whatever. If he got a problem, cool. There ain't no problem. I got a problem too. I don't know he got a problem with some nigga with, with true life. I guess they was beefing or whatever. So them two niggas is beefing, whatever. I'm downtown the club by myself, Dolo. True life and like three niggas get out of the car. I was like, yeah, fuck, dip set, da 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 We get into an altercation down at the club. It's, it's like three or four of these niggas and it's me. So we get into an altercation. You know, the next day it's publicized, it's all blown out of proportion, whatever. To me, that shit was cool. I got, I got caught slipping. I didn't know motherfucking... I was beefing with this nigga, but it's fine. I don't got no problem. It's, it is what it is. That's part of the street shit. So, you know, it's on the radio, whatever, whatever. Jim goes on the radio that night and tells Miss Info. This is how, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of shit was built off the diplomat shit. Miss Info, she ended up getting a job. Her name was Minion. She ended up getting a job at High 97 off of this shit called Miss Info because she knew us. I had a personal relation with Miss Info, and Jim did too off the whole shit or whatever. But he, the moral story is, he calls Miss Info and tells people on radio, after I get this altercation, yo, Cam's on punishment. Huh? Cam's on punishment. Miss Info's on the radio. Nobody knows we got a problem. Whether about the shirts, whether with Joel's, the public don't notice. And my thing is, keep shit in the house. To me, all this shit we doing right now is bird shit. But I just don't want niggas thinking I'm some bad type of guy or whatever. This is why I'm doing this shit. I think this shit is bird shit. Personally, motherfucking being on live and do, when a nigga got my motherfucking phone number. I think this shit is stupid. Jim gets on the radio and says Cam is on punishment. Who the fuck are you talking to? Who the fuck? I'm on punishment. Why this nigga talking to? So that's when shit started getting public. And I'm like, yo, bro, this is the nigga out of line telling me some shit like that. So I'm sitting there like, I'm on punishment. 
All right, cool. I ignore this shit, whatever. Now the public knows we got problems. Nobody in the public ever knew we had problems. Cool. You want to make it publicized? Cool. I'm on punishment for getting an altercation with a nigga you had a problem with. And this same nigga, the same nigga you talking about, took your jewelry. You know, you go on, you go on, on YouTube, Jojo Capone, shout out to Jojo, I've seen Jojo, you know, all that shit is old, so Jojo Capone, shout out to Jojo Capone, and True Life, I just seen Jojo in Chicago, shout out to him. And like I said, all this shit is old, this ain't shout out because he did that, it's just, I just seen him, we all cool, whatever. How, I, how you gonna say I'm on punishment? Because a, a nigga you got beef with that robbed you, got your shit. I don't even know you got beef with the nigga. These niggas got Jim Jewelry on on YouTube. Yeah, we took Jim Jones bringing all this other shit. And I'm sitting there like, let me know what the fuck going on in the street so I know I'm moving. But we didn't have great communication at that time. Our communication was lack. So I'm like, cool, nigga gonna say I'm on punishment, boom. Right after that incident happened, my mother had a stroke a week later. Less than a week later, she had three strokes in one day. To this day, her whole left side of her body is still paralyzed a little bit. So I'm like, damn, you know, I gotta make sure my mom is good because she had three strokes in one day. So what I did was, I took my mother to Fort Lauderdale to the best stroke doctors down there and got a, got a, um, I rented a, um, townhouse down there. And, um, I had to make sure my mother wasn't going to die. I didn't want my mother to die, man. Just take a couple months for her to get her walking back together. You know, her speech to this day is still um, impaired. impaired a little bit because of to this day. So, I'm not, after that incident happened, I had my mother, so I'm off the scene for two, three months. And they like, oh, Kim is hot and Kim ain't around. Niggas Kim, then now the dip, gym like, oh, that shit, Kim niggas ain't around. Oh, niggas missing. So after that incident happened with, with True Life, and then my mother had a stroke, and then I had to make sure you good. Niggas don't know. Niggas ignore the part about my mother having a stroke, and just talk about after act like this situation is why I wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? Cool, whatever. So Jim starts getting petty with people. If you hang out with me. He not fucking with you. I'm, I'm not on that shit. Because we got a bunch of mutual friends. We got mad mutual friends. To this day, we still have mutual friends. And I'm not that type of person to be like, oh, if you you with Jim, don't hang with me. I'm not, like I said, I've known a dude who went on 20 years. I'm not I'm not like that. Oh, Yo, y'all, I was just with Jim. Cool. You tell Jim you was just with me. Stay over there. Let Cam take care of you then. Let Cam take care of you then. Yo, he tell, he tell a nigga, I ain't going to say a nigga name. One of, our nigga, one of our mutual friends was in the studio, not even in my studio. He was in the studio. And he just put up a picture in the studio. Jim called him like, oh, you over there at Cam's studio? Let him take care of you. I hope he's going to take care of you this time and third. And it's like, yo, bro, if, if a nigga, why a nigga can't come to my studio? Me and you never had no real problems. Okay, the t-shirt was wrong, whatever. Boom, I'm past that. But why are you... Threatening niggas because they trying to just get up, get out the hood too. They go in the studio, so if a nigga come to my studio, they can't go to your studio, and we all know each other 20 years. If you don't want to fuck with me, but don't make niggas make choices, and that's what he started doing. Yo, if you over there fucking with him, don't call me. I ain't fucking with you. Oh, you over there fucking with niggas? I ain't fucking with you. And I'm like, I'm not on it like that. I'm gonna fuck. If nigga leave with me right now, I go hang out with Jim. That shit don't matter to me. I'm not on that shit, my nigga. That shit is girl shit to me. I'm not to Jim a girl. I'm they, oh, you call him a girl. I'm just saying, it ain't like it's a bitch. It's niggas. Ain't like, yo, this bitch is over here fucking with me. Thank you for it. It's niggas. It's niggas, bitch. This is not no bitches, my nigga. So, he still do that to this day. It's like, like five, six months ago, I'm shooting a video. We used the same videographer. My man, I am ghetto nerd. What up? My man, Cliff. Clifton. Clifton, uh, Clifton Bell, his name on Instagram, I'm pretty sure he's watching this. I am Ghetto Nerd. Jim called, we do, I'm doing a video, Jim calls him four, five, six, seven, eight months ago and tell him, yo, I see, I see you doing a video with Kim. I ain't fucking with you no more. 
I ain't fucking with you no more. I ain't, I ain't, I don't want to be about fucked. I ain't fucking with you no more. And then nigga like, Jim, so you know, I'm a very professional businessman. He said, Jim, let me ask you a question. If Cam gets booked in a club this week and they book you next week, you're not going to go to the club because Cam was booked there? He tells the nigga, I don't want to make sense. I'm petty like that. I don't give a fuck. You fuck with I don't, like, you making sense, but I don't want to make sense. And niggas is like, yo, bro, I don't know what your anger about is. You niggas like, cause you know, niggas be like, oh man, why you gotta pick a side and it don't make no sense? Cause it ain't deep like that. Ain't no, nobody got no fights. Me and them ain't no fight, ain't no shootouts, no none of that shit. So, basically, um, that's how the fallout happened. Because even the shit that, I, that happened with True Life in the Street, cool, whatever. But when you go on the radio and say I'm on, on punishment, it's crazy. You know, I go on and do a scene for Love and Hip Hop. I just came from me and I had some khakis and shoes on. He get on Twitter. Niggas wearing khakis and shoes. Everything becomes public when this dude got my phone number. That's all I'm saying. Like, even all this shit leading up to this, you have my phone number. You can call me, my nigga. This shit don't have to be publicized. Basically, what happened is this, and I'm just being my opinion. I could be totally wrong. You signed, you signed the Rock Nation, right? And a lot of people was hating, like, oh, you're a dick rider, you're a sucker, how you gonna sign the Rock Nation, this, that, and third. This what, you know, comments and fans and people who love the diplomats were saying. And it's like, the next day he go to Flex. Now, when you go to Flex, most of the time you got a new record. You go up there with a new record. You play the record. That's why you go to Flex. I think he went to Flex or Flex called him to justify him signing the Rock Nation. That was justification, like, oh, I'm getting a lot of backlash, I signed the Rock Nation, so let me go make up this fucking story about how Ken robbed me, and I got a new lawyer, and he ain't giving none of us our money, and I had $1,500 in my pocket, and I fought everybody for the diplomat to just justify him signing the Rock Nation when you should be like me. Me, only reason I did this shit tonight, and I'm still, I'm, I still got more to tell. I'm going to get in America's Most Wanted, the Rucker fight, all that shit. I'm just telling you I, right now, but I got to get into the tough part. I, never, I just did all the music part. We got sections of this shit. We going to get into all this tough shit in a minute. So, me, I signed a Rock Nation or whatever. You know, I'm 40 years old. I'm not signing a motherfucking person. I'm just saying, to me, it seemed like he had to justify it and make up all these stories of how I robbed him and how I... I I used to stay, he gave me a place to stay, and you used to give me fresh, and you was my manager, this nigga said he's my manager, my hype man, my dog, so, just say you signed the Rock Nation, that's it, you don't have to go into this hour speech, two hour speech about me, you signed the Rock Nation, and then the next day, talk about Camp Fowl, it just don't make no sense to me, I just don't understand it. It's testimony. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you get what I'm saying? It was more the fact that he got a lot of backlash out of Rock right Nation because his diplomat is diplomat fans. Right. So niggas like, oh, this nigga time he fucking it up, ain't gonna be no you. You know how fans is. <laughs> so the next day, me personally, I signed to whoever that you know, like I said, I'm not signing a motherfucking person at this point in my life. But I'm just saying if you if you did, man, listen, fuck that. I'm side, nigga. I don't care what you motherfuckers think. Fuck man, whatever. I ain't, hey, you'll get over it. Niggas got over Kevin Durant going to motherfucking Golden State. You know what I'm saying? It is. I mean, you know. You know what it is. What it is. Niggas will get over that motherfucking shit. Niggas will get over it. That's what I would say. You be mad now, you'll get over it. And if you don't, what can I do? But I'm me. I can't expect everybody to be me. You know what I'm saying? So I just didn't understand the timing of it. You sign a Rock Nation. The next day, it's an hour and 15 conversation about me. Man, just like, uh, congratulations, bro. Congratulations. You ain't got to go through this elaborate bullshit story to justify you signing with Rock Nation and crying on it. That's the only reason I came up here because, you know, it's like, all oh, that man poured his heart out. And a lot of stuff that he said was true. I'm not discrediting the whole story, but a lot of shit he said was not true. A lot of shit was not true, you know what I'm saying? And then he'd be like, oh, he was crying. But Jim is emotional. He, he said it on the show, he's mad emotional. 
he, he, he does things off emotion. Even when this, this shit is over, he gonna get on the gram and do something emotional. He is, I'm just telling you. Oh, he, he is, he gonna write some shit. Oh, niggas, da, 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 da. He, he's like that. I'm telling you he's gonna do that. That's what he's gonna do, he does that. Or go on Twitter, or he'll wait a day or two, cause I said it now, and do say something else. That's just the way he is. Ain't nothing wrong with that, he's just an emotional guy. You know what I'm saying? So, like you know, he's crying. Yo, go to love, go to love and hip hop. Go to love and hip hop. He crying on there too. He crying on love and hip hop. Him and Chrissy just had a show that went over there. The last show of their season, he crying on there too. He crying on these shits. That nigga not cry. I'm not dissing him. I'm just, you know, niggas be like him trying to this. This nigga, he ain't just cry yesterday in that interview. He cry. He been crying. Because he's emotional, I'm not saying his tears are fake. I'm not saying he does it to be, I just think he gets that built up emotionally to where he cries. Cause he's just built up emotionally. Like I said, when you get a chance, I don't know if it's on YouTube or any of that other shit, but on Love and Hip Hop, he's sitting in front of his mother house crying over some shit with him and his girlfriend and his mother. And I get it, I understand he wants his girlfriend to get along with his mother. I want my girlfriend, I want my wife to get along with my mother, I'm not gonna cry. You know what I'm saying? He, he, uh, whatever him and Chrissy are going on, like, he's crying. And you know, niggas call me, I, cause I don't watch it. Then I turn it into I'll catch one demand or something. Like, and you know, that's still my nigga. Like, I'm not talking about the interview all day, so that's still my nigga. So I'm like, I'm looking, I'm like, don't cry. I'm looking at the show on TV, like, I'm like, do not let that tear come down. Don't fucking cry. Oh shit, he's crying. <laughs> 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 I'll be mad about this shit. I'll be like, God damn, man. Hold that shit in, man. You know what I'm saying? So when a lot of people seen the interview and they be like, oh, he cried. Like, Jim is emotional. He cries. And even when he mad, he cries. And so it wasn't to me. I didn't take it like, oh, he's pointing so hard. He got emotional. He got emotional buildup. And that was that. So now... Like I said, that was, that's basically my side of the story as far as business is concerned and how the diplomats got built and how, you know, like I said, you know, I just said this a while ago, but like I said, we all built this diplomat thing together, whether it's fucking Luca, I'm going to start shouting Luca Brazi out more too because he played a major part, LS Collection on Instagram, LS Collection, uh, JR Writer, Uncasa, uh, Hell Realm, Jim Jones. Duke the God, uh, Joel Santana. We all built the building, but I had the land. You can't build a building without having a land, B. So you can try to discredit me as much as you want. And that's fine with me. I'm 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 40, right? I want to do cool shit when I'm 40. For me, when I do music, it's for fun. It's not to pay my bills. It's not a priority. It's not like, yo, I gotta hurry up and put an album out because I gotta pay. I'm good, nigga. I'm straight forever. I'm straight. I do music for fun. I'm 40. When you're 40, music got to be for fun. It's a young man's game for rappers. And it ain't too many niggas in their 40s doing it. It ain't too many Jada Kisses. It ain't too many Fabulouses. It ain't too many Jay-Zs. It ain't too many Kanye's who probably about to be 40. Niggas, it's a, a small group of niggas who sustain shit from their 20s over three decades. Kisses, Kiss got the... Is on a three decade run. When I say three, I don't mean 30 years, I mean 90s, 2000s, and 10s. Fab, fab, 90s, 2000s. Jay Z, it's, it, you know, Eminem. If, if you're not Eminem, don't even be out whenever he want. It's, you know, when you 40, you're supposed to be doing cool shit, man. It's supposed to be for fun. This shit ain't a priority to me. I'm gonna do a couple more albums, a couple more mixtapes, because I just like to do it. I got trucks, I got 18 wheelers, I got car washes, I got restaurants. This is the shit that 40 year old niggas should be doing. Cool shit. Polo roll. Whatever mirror juju this shit is. You see this shit in the mirror right here? This is the cool shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, go. So it's juju on some chandelier shit. She got, yo, it is a chandelier in every fucking room in this fucking house, my nigga. She did a great job direct, direct um, decorating this crib, man. I don't even know what you call that shit over, whatever. <laughs> Every room got a motherfucking chandelier in this motherfucker, man. Like, 
Like, let's go chandelier shopping, baby. <laughs> like, you know, she, she on my ass for getting the chandelier. I got to get a chandelier. I'm supposed to do the new room over there. It's like, I like doing shit like that. Yo, let's go chandelier shopping. Let's go front, like, cool shit. Like, let's go, yeah, man, yeah, shit like this. You know what I'm saying? But the whole point is, when you 40, you shouldn't be out here arguing and beefing unless you got to. Don't get me wrong, sometimes lessons not learned in blood are quickly forgotten. So you got to beat a nigga ass once in a while, but like, just always want to fight and beat when you 40? Nah, man, not me. And I, trust me, if a problem come on with it, I ain't got no problem. That's why I make one call to one person, and he know the one person I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. My man, my man Titan, my man lived down here in Orlando with me, but he from the Bronx. I make one call, that's all I got to call. I got to call 100 niggas. I ain't got to do all that. Even though I got 100 friends. I can call 100 niggas by my own. My niggas on fire, I call, I call all my niggas if I need to, because they gonna be there and I'm gonna wake up, but I'm not into that. I wanna do cool shit at 40 years old. When you're 40 years old, you may have, it depends on how, how you taking care of yourself in life. You may have less time on earth than you already spent. You might check out at 62, you got 22 left. I'm not saying I plan on doing that, but I'm just saying in general, you should be enjoying your for not, yo, I'm gonna fight this nigga. This down the third, you wanna still wanna fight Max B and tell him that you hope Max B die and you wanna fight. Yo, bro, nobody did nothing to your family, nobody got hurt. Enjoy your 40s, bro. You 40. Enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. Okay, so we'll get to a couple of things. So everybody's like, let's get to the to the violent, bro. You wanna hear the violent shit, right? You don't hear the violent shit. So, okay, Rucker Park, right? <laughs> we gonna hit the rucker park now, cause every I just never address none of this shit. I always, cause I don't be caring what niggas think. Oh, niggas ran and all this other shit. Listen, so it's this dude named Jim been face fighting this nigga for like three different events. You know, cause we be Mace was Mace was me we wasn't fuck with Mace no more, but we would you know we was on promotional tour with Mace. So when Mace was triple platinum. We didn't have an album out, but we was on his tour, and we, this shit was weird, like, we wouldn't even speak to Mace, and we was, like, opening up for him, and we wasn't even really speaking to him, but Mace was running around with Junior Mafia at that time, so, you know, we go to these events, and Jim and this nigga named Gutter, his name is Gutter, was face fighting, just ice grilling each other at all these events, you know what I'm saying, and I'm like, what's going on, you know what I'm saying, like, nah, he looking at me, so I'm looking at him, cool, what up? Here's a rucker. It came up the rucker. The kid gutter comes up and snuffed Jim or whatever. He didn't get jumped or whatever. They got a tough fight. Gutta jumped him. Little C's goes on the, on the fucking shit like, yeah, look at me chasing Cam. That's why I be like, yo, look at the footage. Where's a nigga chasing me? Like, oh, pull up the footage. Cam, I'm chasing Cam. And then even little C's tell niggas he had a fight with me. Oh, me and Cam fan, I beat, I beat his ass. He ran. See, why are you a lot of people like that? And I'm not, I'm not beefing there because you know what happened? Years later, Siege reached out to a mutual friend, my homegirl, White Brianna. I don't know if she's listening. Shout out to White Brianna. And she's like, yo, Cam, Siege wanted to meet up with you to apologize about all that nonsense that went on back in the days. And I'm like, I don't, I don't give a fuck because I don't care what people think. I don't really care what people think. I don't care. I don't mind. But Siege was on, doing an interview saying he chased me and he beat me up and all this other shit. And I'm like, come on, some little C. You know, he a little, he, little C's lift weights now. So he might be a little, but back then it's like, come on, C. Chase me and beat me up. But he ran with it. You know what I'm saying? I, I know he's the young Ken Jr. Mafia. Cool, whatever. That shit never happened, bro. Jim and Gutter was face fighting. Little C's ain't never had no fight with me or chase me a motherfucking place. Period. And he called to try to be my friend afterwards. And I'm cool with you. Shout out to C's if he listen to friends listening. Wish him nothing but the best also. I wish you the best. That's that. Now this is America's most wanted shit, right? So let's get to America. So Jim, Jim was saying that, oh, I did this for the crew. I did that for the crew. This, that, and third. I had shootouts. I had shootouts for this. No disrespect. I keep saying no disrespect. Who you shot? Who you were shooting? <laughs> nah, dead ass. What gun he had? Not, that serious. Not, not even joking. <clears throat> not even joking. Jim never had no guns. Jim never had no guns, B. What happened was this. 
before we get to that. I had the guns. Google now. Go. You get a chance. Google Kim Gunshot. Just, just Google it if you get a chance. You next to another phone. My case will pop up with the King Court with the bird or whatever. What happened, girl? My phone ringing. I don't know what's that. My other phone. I'm going to stop. I'm just trying to turn it off. Where did the phone at, though? Oh. Um. Oh, this. Oh, hold on. Oh, fuck. This man DC calling, man. You missed the call? Yeah, call Damn. back, man. DC called back, man. Damn. Damn. He was just asking about that, too. Damn, man. Damn, man. DC just. Damn, man. I hope he called back. Please call back, man, DC. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody motherfucker. Or damn, B. Nigga clue. Somebody tell DJ Clue to him that uh <laughs> that I'm on live, Clue texting me talking about I can't need you on the story much show Monday. I need you just out the story. Clue, you know you my nigga. I'm telling my side now, man. <laughs> Niggas say I got my phone and my backup computer. Nate, what up, boy? What's good? Damn, my whole man DC fucking called back. Debo, what up, boy? What's good? <laughs> Tiff want a shout out. Fine, Tiff, Tiff to get shot. Out. <laughs> Niggas out here. Let me see. There's too many texts. Niggas said it's that an iPhone 4. It's a 4. Yeah, I got the 4. I keep it old school, man. It's a 4. Sid just four. finally got rid of his 4. Nah, I'm keeping my shit. This shit is classic. And it still works. I'm taking y'all on my live on my six, but um, I'm for business. I use the four still. Fuck a man. I miss this call. Yo, call Yandy because she. I just texted her. I told her to, to email him or something. Yo, Tom, stop fucking hating on my motherfucking phone, man. Tom from Cali. What up, nigga? <laughs> yeah, I did. PT. Yeah, I did. Ayo. Yeah, I did. So, um, yo, my bad. I just looked at my phone. Shout out to 40 Cal, too. 40 Cal was part of this whole shit, too. He came late, though. He came a little late. I put 40 on, but shout out to 40 Cal. So, anyway, so cool. Let me get back to this story, man, because I'm going to wrap this shit up soon, but I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to skip that. Google Cameron gun charge or Cameron gun, whatever. I caught with the hammer because I run around with the hammers. You know what I'm saying? So, I caught a case. And I didn't know if I was going to go to jail or get probation because that time, the law, the law in uh, New York was you could get eight months jail time. You get a year jail time when you got to do eight months or you could get probation. So I was hoping for probation. So, you know, at this time, we went around beefing with Nas and his niggas and we know a little beef with these niggas or whatever. So I kept a little joint on me because I was like, nigga ain't going to catch me slipping. So I caught a case with that joint. So then, I, you know, I'm out on bail or whatever. I gotta go, um, whatever, the, whatever. I end up getting a year of probation, whatever the judge decided. So I tell, I see Jim. Jim got a gun. I said, Jim, get rid of the fucking gun. You don't need a gun. We both don't need case, um, cases because who gonna run the company if I gotta go to jail? He's like, yeah, you're right, Flea. But he wasn't ever carrying no gun. But Jim is good at though is recruiting people who's tough. Jim know how to recruit some tough ass Yeah, he said she emailed him. I don't know what this is. Just pick up. I don't know. Yo. Who this? Yo, what up? You on you, you the phone with me? All right. All right, bet. All right, say no more. All right. All right, bet, bro. It's my boy, Sack. Send me in D.C. going to call back in... Uh, you don't come back in 15 minutes. So, um, um, so, I'm like, yo, I'm going to turn Just the phone off. Just leave it off. out, baby, so if you call your phone. Oh, this is annoying. Oh, here you go. It might be up.
This man yeah, DC calling in. Who's this? Yeah. What I need to push? Shit, I ain't here. I, I think, is it five? Oh, shit. Hello? Let me call Yandy. Oh, my yeah, God. It's not for, I don't want to push the wrong fucking button. I want to. Yandy, well, Yandy. Shh. Yo, what up, bro? What's up, bro? What's the deal, man? Shit, we live right now. You got niggas listening in. I had to go live real quick. You alright? I miss you, nigga. I miss you, too, bro. I miss you, too. Yo, listen, first I want to say thank you for holding down. But you can't tell me what you are. What you, you trying to get on me and DC to get on the leg with you, man. So I, man, I just touched my heart. Man, I want to say it. I, I appreciate that, bro. And I love you for that, man. Like, you don't even know. Nah, you already know, bro. You know, everybody, ain't a, you know, we all end up in different situations, but if I'm able to do for one of my brothers, that ain't about nothing. And if, if it need to be like that ever again, or tomorrow, it's the same situation, man. You know, your son is my son, too, man. I love that nigga. Oh, man. That's, that's what's up. Yo, damn, yo, I'm hearing a lot of crazy things going on out there. Killer, what the hell is this? So right now, listen, we live on Instagram. There's probably 100,000 niggas listening, but you on speakerphone. So okay. so basically, you know, you, you, call, you call kind of a good time because we're talking about all the beefs or whatever. So I was explaining, I'm going to let the people, you give the people your perception on you and Jim Jones' relationship. When you say not not to, not not to cut you off, when you say fell back from him, you used to hang out with him. Just tell me what you mean when you say fell back. I ain't, I ain't never hang out with him. Like, Max B told me he wanted to meet me, and um, when Max B told me like, yo, he want to meet you, yo, come through, come to Miami with him, and whatever the case may be. So I'm figuring, what he want to meet me for? He maybe he want to make some money or something. So when I when I found out he just wanted to hang out. I was, I was like, nah, you know, that ain't really my seat. I don't hang out like that. Then I met Yen when I went to Miami. She told me she don't mess with uh, Jim Jones' friends. And I, that basically ended our relationship right there. Right. So how did how did you and him get into an altercation? Like, how did y'all two start beefing? Well, it wasn't really a beef because it was like really one side, you know? It right. Was, See the see the thing is this, bro. I know the story, but I want you to. I, I know everything. I just want people. Okay, okay, I know this. You you know I know everything. Is just you got a hundred thousand listeners right now. Just tell your side because you never really get to tell your side. Miami, and then when he came over there to, to my 
project, which he, the stupid nigga didn't even know that was my project. He, he just thought he had to call it from a federal prison. Hold, yeah. hold on, hold on, man, DC. Let me, hold on, let me just catch everybody up to speed. So, basically, Jim and, Jim and, Jim and, Jim and, Jim and Man DC had words exchanged in Miami over Chrissy and Andy. And basically, they was going to squash it in New York. So Jim goes to Man DC's projects to go meet him. That's where Man DC's at in this story right now. Right. So, so when he got, when I got over there, he was talking calm at first. And then um, he just started getting loud. And then when he, when he got loud, it was it. It was over. And next thing you know, he was, he was crying and crawling underneath the car and begging to please leave him alone. And then he called Miss Info and told her it was a boxed out robbery. And I was like, robbery? Nobody takes nothing from him. He, he just ran and jumped on the back of a motorcycle and got his car there and his pants was falling. He was falling and tripping. And, you know, I, 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 I didn't know he could run that fast. <laughs> Yo, okay, okay, okay. So, so, okay, okay. So basically, he came, he came to your projects. Y'all supposed to squash the beef. The beef ended up not getting squashed. Yeah, he got loud. Like he took his coat off and he was talking loud and he took his coat off and I think that's as soon as he took his coat off, that was a mistake he made. I, I think. I mean, you know what? I don't mean like he waited six years to tell you. It's been like, like six years ago. Right. Like we. Okay, so look, so okay, y'all got into that altercation. He got on the back of a motorcycle, whatever. After that happened, okay, so now you and him get into this altercation. Whatever happened, whoever won, you won or he won, whatever. Y'all got beef now. Y'all two niggas got beef after this situation. No, no, listen, man, there's no beef. He squashed. No, 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 no. Listen, no, man, DC, listen, listen. What I'm saying is, I'm telling you story by storm. I'm telling step by step. After y'all got into this altercation, what happened the next day or week or whatever? He sent everybody calling my phone and leave him alone and squash it. Like, he ain't got no problems. And, I mean, I, I was okay with it. I just said, you know, I, I, I thought he learned his lesson. I didn't think I need to go any further. <laughs> right. So, how did y'all end up squashing the beef with y'all two? So that so that's how the beef got squashed with y'all too. Right. Did y'all actually ever meet up to squash the beef, or that was just off the strength? No, 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 that was it. We never met. Next time I seen him, I was in a mall in the true religious store. Me and my cousin Dollar, and he just he, he just had a beef with me. I mean, next thing you know, he running from me. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, I'm like, what the fuck? 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 Like, what the Obviously, it wasn't squashed because when he seen you in the mall, he yeah, he just took off running. You know what it was? I think I think he just was waiting for the time to see me when he was like with like twenty people, and I maybe saw was like like two. He was like, "Yo, let me go get some beef." Like he was like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Like he was just like, "Yo, let me get some beef." Turned into six years, and I, I, I thought he clearly forgot about it, but I'm in prison. He went to, I come to prison to talk about it. I, I, I was very confusing. But you know what? Ash got that videotape too. I told Ian to, um, um, to get that, to, to send that to you because it's the
calling me and shit, man. I'm going to get up there to see you. I'm going to talk to Yan and figure out what I got to do to come up there and see you. But she told me, now that I know uh, it's the, what the number is, when you call in, I'm going to pick up. Oh, yeah, I'll be seeing it. You know, I'll be, yeah. Yeah, because I, if I don't know the number, I'll be picking up. Oh, uh, try yeah, tell that nigga I love that nigga too, man. That nigga, my nigga, um, million dollar racist. Tell that nigga I love him, baby. Murder on here, all your Brooklyn niggas. Yo, I got the no Now that I know you call and call me whenever, I'm going to pick up every time. And I'm going to find out what I got to do from you and come see you, bro. All right, <laughs> 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 Bro, I'm on it. I promise. I promise. I'm on it. I promise. Nigga gonna get ass fired. I love you, bro. All right. Ass gonna get fired, sir. So, <laughs> so um, damn, I ain't no nigga. Videos. Yeah, that's kind of shit. Um, damn, that shit put me up a little bit. Yeah. Um, shit. Um, so, sorry about this, um, Yeah, that's this nigga, you a sucker, man. This nigga's the street is a sucker, man. So, so they got the video tape of that shit. I ain't no niggas tape that shit. Yeah. Um, where was that? I, so basically, we had man, man, DC calling because, you know, that was my problem also when, when before man DC went in, him and him and uh, man DC kept getting got his altercation. Maybe just in case you didn't hear man DC, they got to an altercation in Miami. They are supposed to come squash it in New York. He, Jim comes to me and DC's projects to squash it, but they end up arguing it. You know, I'm not going to go into the details, but it turned, it escalated after that because they end up not squashing it. So, D from Rough Riders is supposed to squash it between them two. So, after that, it's supposed to be no beef. So, you know, cool. I wasn't taking no rights. By this time, back to the story, by this time, by this time, me and Jim.